All right, good evening, everyone. Here is Cornelius Jones coming at you again with another video for this evening. And as promised, we are going to get into our study with the, uh, the wars and rumors of wars with North Korea. And so if you've been paying attention to the news, it's been everywhere. There has been this war of uh, words between uh, Korea's president, Kim Jong-un, and our fiery president, Donald Trump. And so uh, do these uh, clash of words, uh, could it send the, uh, is there an upcoming war up, uh, that is going to be upon us? Well, only time will tell. Uh, if you ask me, I definitely believe it is. Uh, but we're going to look at exactly, is this just some coincidence that's happened in our nation or does the Bible have something to say about this? Well, I'm sure if you've been watching me <laughs> and my videos uh, for some time now, you definitely know that I believe it's the latter. Well, let's go ahead and jump into this. Uh, before we get started, I briefly want to just just say again, you know, for all of us who are looking for the blessed return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I just feel the need to reiterate this truth, okay? For those of you who are uneasy about us looking at signs, trying to interpret what scripture is saying, and talking about a potential time that the rapture could happen, I just want to say one more time to everyone out there that there is a clear difference between naming a particular day and hour that the rapture is going to happen and knowing the season that the rapture is going to happen. That's so important. That is so important. You know, there have been some dates that have been thrown out there, but the dates are not we the dates that we are talking about are not saying we're not saying that the rapture is going to happen on these dates. OK, so there are two dates out there that we're discussing. We're discussing August 21st. That is the date of the solar eclipse. Now, what does that mean? Well, I have another video that talks about what I believe that means. But we're not, we're not prophesying that any particular thing is going to happen on that day. All we're doing is looking at the fact that an eclipse is going to happen on August 21st. That's it. Okay? And then I have other videos that talk about what I believe it means as it relates to biblical prophecy. Okay? Now, another date, the, a more popular date that we're all looking forward to, we definitely want to see what's going to happen around this time, is September 23rd, 2017. Now, no one said, I know I haven't, I have never said, it has never been my position that the rapture is definitely going to happen on September 23rd, okay? I personally believe the rapture is going to happen before September 23rd, but do I know? No, I do not. I do not know the specific day or hour of the rapture. OK, with that said, knowing the day and hour is one thing, but I don't see how you can be a serious Bible student and not see that Jesus Christ has given us signs of the season. That's a stark difference. OK, so these wars and rumors of wars that we're talking about, well, in, in order before we can even get into that, I have to get into these signs because these Wars and rumors of wars is just one of the indications that Jesus is saying the time is near at the doors. OK, and so I want to get into this right now. Uh, there's a difference between knowing the sign and knowing the seasons. And I'm going to show you in Scripture exactly what I'm talking about, because Jesus Christ, 100 percent, without a doubt, he wants us to know the season. He wants us to know the season. OK, so let's look at this. I'm going to start off in Luke chapter one, excuse me, Luke chapter 21. And then we're going to get into this war, uh, wars and rumors of war specifically. OK, so I'm going to start in Luke chapter 21 and we're going to look at verse nine. OK, 
Watch what it says. Jesus is talking about uh, the coming of the end and how you will know that it's that it's near. OK. And he says in verse nine. But when you hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified for these things must come to pass first. But the end will not come immediately. So right, Jesus is saying right before the end comes, we are going to hear these wars, hear of these wars, possible wars and, and commotions of wars. Well, do we see that happening today? Absolutely. OK, absolutely. And the tension is rising more than ever before. OK, so I don't want to get ahead of myself. We're going to get into that in just a moment. But I'm going to look at another verse in Scripture. OK. I want to look at the book of Joel, chapter 2, and we're going to look at verse 31. Here are more signs that Jesus is talking about, okay? This is a prophecy from Joel, chapter 2, verse 31. It says very clearly, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Now, we know this coming and awesome day of the Lord is not talking about the rapture. It's talking about the second coming when he comes to culminate the day of the Lord, which is his wrath during the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. The day of the Lord is when he comes and he wipes out all the nations that are surrounding Jerusalem and waging war with them. He's going to destroy them, judge the wicked and set up his millennial reign. That is the day of the Lord. That is the terrible day of the Lord that culminates with his second coming. Well, he's saying before this happens, the moon is going to be turned into blood. The sun is going to be turned into darkness. We just saw a, 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 a tetrad of blood moons in 2014 and 2015. And here we are in 2017 coming upon a, a total eclipse of the sun where the sun is being turned to darkness and it hasn't happened in 99 years. And then we have two about to happen in a seven year period. And we know the tribulation is seven years. Come on, guys, this just makes too much sense. We are seeing the signs that Jesus is talking about that must precede his second coming. OK, now let's look at another scripture. We're going to go back to Luke chapter 21, and we are going to look at verse 25 through 27. Watch what this verse says, okay? Here it is. We're talking about the return of Jesus Christ, and watch what he says. Because remember, this entire text here is, is also, you can also read Matthew 24. It's very, uh, this is one of the synoptic gospels. We got Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They all tell similar stories from their perspective about the things that Jesus spoke. You have to understand that Jesus was at answering a question that the disciples asked about when he would return. OK, and so Jesus spends time in this chapter explaining to them the things that would take place before that happens, before his return. And watch what he says here in verse 25 of chapter 21. It says, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. Okay? That's what we see happening. We see this eclipse is a sign of the sun and the moon. And on September 23rd, we are going to see signs in all three, the sun, the moon, and the stars. Okay? God is sending us signs not to know the specific day so that we will know the season. But there's more to this. It's watch what it says. Not only will there be signs in the sun and moon and stars, it says still in verse 25 and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and waves roaring. Well, what does that sound like? Tsunamis. There have been tsunamis all over the place, okay? And re in our recent history, there have been tsunamis and those are waves that are causing distress to the nations. Now, this has not happened, a huge one has not happened to the United States, 
But and listen, this is not a prophecy, but I would not be surprised if there was a tsunami that happened on somewhere on the West Coast or maybe the East Coast of the United States. I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised because, again, we see in Revelation, I explained in Revelation in another video of why I believe that Mystery Babylon is talking about America because it fits the prophecy. And these, these uh, distress of nations due to these waves warring, when we look at Revelation, we see that a great earthquake is going to happen that's going to cause the nation to split into three parts. And there is a river in the United States that divides the city into three parts. Uh, it's the Mississippi River, and there's, there's one other river, uh, river. I apologize, I can't think of it right now. But this river divides the, the, the nation into three parts. It says that Mystery Babylon is going to be divided into three parts by this major earthquake, and then the, the islands are going to flee away. In other words, a tsunami of some sort is going to have to raise up to make the islands flee away. Okay, this this is incredible. Thing. This is incredible stuff right here. All right. So seeing waves warring in verse 25, then in verse 26, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heavens will be shaken. The powers of heaven are going to be shaken. OK. Now, some of these things we have not seen completely because in Revelation it explains how these great hail is going to be coming down to the earth. And I believe that's going to happen during the tribulation period. But there are some of these things that are happening before the wars, the rumors of wars, the sun being turned to darkness, the moon being turned to blood. You cannot tell me that we are not in the season of the Lord's return. And by the Lord's return, in this case, I'm talking about the rapture of the church that precedes the seven day, the seven year tribulation, which precedes his final second coming when he sets up the millennial reign and he judges the earth. OK. So finally, verse 27, it says they will see the son of man coming in a cloud with great power and glory. Verse 28. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Does that sound like Jesus is trying to keep secret the season of his return? Does this verse sound like it's a secret? Does this verse sound like Jesus doesn't know when, when his season is up to return? Does this sound like that to you? No. No. Absolutely not. Okay. Now, here we go. I'm going to read another scripture here. Verse 31. When he, he, remember, from here, he goes to talk about the, the parable of the fig tree. I have another video about that. I'm not going to get deep into that. But watch what he says in verse 31. He says, so you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Guys, Jesus is not telling anyone a particular day of his return. He's telling people when you know the season is at hand. And that is all we're trying to say. The season is at hand. So no, you don't, we don't know the day and hour, but could we know the month and year? I don't see anywhere in scripture where we can't know the month and year. Because seasons happens within months. The months me measure the seasons. So could we know the year? I believe we can. Now, do I know for sure? I don't. But from my interpretation of scripture and all the other videos I've already placed out with all these signs. Yes, it is my firm belief that we are definitely in the season, in the year of the return of our Lord Jesus Christ the rapture of the church, the ensuing tribulation period. Yes, I can say that without a shadow of a doubt. That doesn't mean I'm, pro I'm prophesying. That doesn't mean I can't be wrong. I'm not dogmatic about it. I understand that I could be wrong. And if I am, again, like I've said before, guys, if it's wrong, 
that if we've missed it somewhere, then we just got to continue to serve Christ. Don't lose hope. Keep the faith and look for him. Watch for him whenever he returns. OK, last scripture I'm going to read. Watch what he says. Verse 34. This is so key right here. It says, but take heed to yourselves. Lest your hearts be weighed down in carousing, drunkenness and cares of this life and that day come upon you unexpectedly. So God has given a warning here. OK, for verse 35, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Verse 36, watch, therefore, you hear what he's saying? Watch, therefore. And pray always that you may be, excuse me, that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the son of man. God is saying here, don't be caught up in the world. Watch so that this will not come upon you. This day will not come upon you unexpectedly. Jesus does not want you. Do you hear that? Jesus does not want his return to be unexpected. And that is what I am coming to. I've been taught all my life that the rapture could happen and we will. And it's going to happen at a point where we are surprised and, oh, we didn't know it was going to happen. Guys, I don't see that here. I see Jesus saying, be looking for the rapture. Watch for my return so that it won't come upon you unexpectedly. God does not want us to be caught off guard with his return, which is why, although he didn't give us the specific day, he is definitely, definitely giving us the season. OK, so please, y'all, please stop making this this no man knows the day or the hour an excuse to not watch. Jesus wants you to watch he, and if you watch and if you see these signs that are that scripture is laying out, then what will happen? It's going to affect the way you live. It's going to cause you to want to serve God more fervently if you are a serious believer in Christ Jesus. And that's what God wants. That's what he wants. He is coming back for a bride without spot or blemish. He is coming back for a bride that is looking for him. Are you looking for him? Listen, you wishing Jesus. There are some people who are so caught up in the world and they don't want Jesus to return because they have goals. They have dreams and they have stuff they want to do. And I get that. But listen, your dreams are not going to stop Jesus from coming back on the day he knows he's coming back. OK. So it's best to pay attention to these signs. Listen, Jesus said an adulterous generation looks for signs, right? But understand, you got to take that in context. He, the Pharisees were not looking for Christ. They were looking for the sign in and of itself. OK, they were looking for a sign that Jesus was who he said he was, which eliminated walking in faith. I'm not looking for any signs that Jesus is the Messiah. I am trying to pay attention to the signs that God gave us that indicate the soonness of his return. Now, that is a big difference. The disciples themselves asked Jesus for a sign. He didn't rebuke them. He rebuked the Pharisees because they were in love with signs and not in love with Christ. And they were looking for signs that Jesus was who he said he was. They didn't believe he was the Messiah. So don't take that out of context. Signs are not evil. God gave signs. I just read a scripture to you in Luke 21, 25 that says there will be signs in the sun, in the moon and in the stars. God gives us signs so that we can watch, so that we will know the season of his return. OK, not the day or the hour, the season. Now, I thought I think I've explained that <laughs> the very best way I could. OK, now, if there are some of you who may still just hold on to the way you want to think about this and that's on you. OK, 
but I've, I believe I've done my due diligence in opening up the Bible and explaining the difference between knowing the day and hour and knowing the season. Now let's move on. Okay. Speaking of knowing the signs, the particular sign that I want to talk about right now and relate to what is going on, what we see going on in our nation is this wars and rumor of wars. Well, what we see here right now, if you've been looking at the news, and I'm, I'm actually kind of late coming out with this. I, I probably should have did this video a few days ago, but hey, it is what it is. But when you look at what's going on in our nation, we have this conflict with North Korea. Okay? So as you know, as many of you already know, North Korea has put out threats to send out missiles towards the area of Guam, okay? And Donald Trump is firing back. I mean, he's firing back saying that North, Korea, uh, that North Korea will be met with fire and fury unlike the world has ever seen. Those were his exact words. Now you have these two hothead presidents that don't, that don't wanna back down and the, and, the, and the nations are getting nervous. Okay, China is involved in this. Japan is involved in this. South Korea is involved in this. Everyone's involved in this. Our, you know, and the, the allies of the United States. Everyone's involved in this. People are trying to say, "Hey, calm this, calm down your rhetoric," because we're about to get into World War Three. Okay, that's the fear and consensus around you know other nations that are surrounding this. Okay, so that's what we see going on in our nation. What I want to point to your attention is this. Before I knew anything about this North Korea thing, I had when I did that video about August 21st, Warning to America, I talked about how America is the mystery Babylon, which explains in this text that America, this mystery Babylon is going to be destroyed. That there that it is it is it is significant in the scripture. It indicates smoke burning, which means they were bombed. There was some type of fire or bombing. It indicates a, a terrible earthquake. It indicates tsunamis, all these terrible things happening. And I believe it's the United States. Well, there are a lot of you out there who saw that video and you thought it was unfathomable that something could happen to the United States. Well, when you look at the news today, when you look at the news, it's not unfathomable anymore. And I just thought that was amazing. I'm like, wow, here it is. I'm, I'm putting this video out. Now, I don't know if I was late or not on the news, but I found out about this stuff with North Korea after I put that video out. Okay. And I'm looking at this stuff like, are you kidding me? So you couple that with other videos I've seen on YouTube. There are so many people out there who have had dreams that the United States was bombed by North Korea. There, and, and people have posted these dreams well before the news published. It was popular in the news that this war of words will happen between this war of words, excuse me, will happen between Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un. And this stuff is just staggering to me. Now, listen, the Bible says in Joel, I just read Joel chapter two. The Bible says in Joel chapter two that in the last days, God is going to pour out his spirit and he's going to give men and women dreams and visions. The Bible says that. I don't think these people are lying. The people that have said that they've had these dreams about North Korea being bombing the United States. I've read for myself that North Korea is working on a nuclear missile something that could take this entire country out. That is the fear among people who are getting paid to report on these events and on these things that are happening in our world. So when you look at that, it is astounding to me. It is just astounding to me. And it makes sense that in the, at some time in the future that uh, the United States of America could be bombed and the, the world that we know as the United States or the nation that we know as the United States can be, would be no more. And I've explained that I believe that that time is really soon. And the only way to escape that is to come to faith in Jesus Christ because we will not be here when that happens. 
Okay. Now, one thing I'm going to do a different video uh, coming up soon because I'm going to I hint I'm going to hint at it now. But I believe that the rapture is a rescue, not only from the tribulation, but I believe this. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get this together. I'm trying to I'm still I'm still wrestling with it a little bit. But I really believe that there's going to be something that's going to happen where, the, you know, this dragon, this heavens, this dragon has to show up in the sky, too. It said another sign in heaven in Revelation 12. A lot of people believe it's Nibiru, Planet X. Don't want to get too much into that. Um, but I I can't say I disagree with that. But for every sign in the heaven, there has to be some natural manifestation on the earth as well. And so what could that mean? The, the harpazo means to snatch away from danger, okay? It's used in the context of snatching away from danger. There has to be something, I believe, that Satan is going to try to do to get to us, and God is going to rapture us out of the way. What would it be? Is it a tsunami? Is it something with wars? I have no idea, but I have this feeling that there's going to be something that's drastic that's going to happen in this nation, and the rapture is going to rescue us away from it. And then the distress that is talked about here in Luke chapter 21 will be upon all these people who got left behind in the rapture. Okay. So, guys, listen. What is the overall point of all of this? The overall point is God's judgment is at hand. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, it's time to get to know him. It's time to repent of sins. If you know Christ, but you're not living for him, you don't want to be ashamed at his coming. You want to be excited and happy at his coming. And you won't be excited to see him if you know you've been living in sin and haven't been serving Christ, haven't been praying haven't been seeking Christ, haven't been living a life that you know that is a life that uh, is uh, that just a life that Jesus Christ died for you to have. A life that is evident of a person who trusts Christ as a Christian, a person who has a relationship with Jesus Christ. So if that's you, I encourage you to turn to Christ with all your heart. If there are any sins that you're struggling with, and trust me, you're not by yourself. I have my own struggles. But, 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 no, but believing that this season is at hand, it is causing me to fall on my knees. It's causing me to ask and beg God to lead me to repentance. It's causing me to seek his word and to minister the gospel and to serve him like, I, like never before. And I pray that these videos are helping you do the same. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. Stay tuned for my next video. And before I sign off, I just want to say a brief thank you to all of my subscribers out there. You guys, you are, you're blowing me away. Now, we got some, some buttholes out there that are just really mean in some of their comments. And I just, y'all, I just laugh at some of these comments. But overwhelmingly, a majority of you are supporting me. You've been thanking me. And words cannot express how, how deeply appreciative I, I am of you. Some of you have even asked about donating to my ministry and things of that nature. And I want to be honest, you know, when I first got into this, I, ha I, I really did not. I was not thinking about doing this for money or anything like that, guys. However, the Lord has just been dealing with my heart about this. And so for those of you. If you're saying, listen, I want to sow into your ministry, okay, I want to, to help you, then listen, I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that. And I would, I would appreciate it. I have a project that um, uh, coming up in the near future where I'm going to get a team of people here in Dallas. And we are going to uh, get a food truck and we are going to prepay as many meals as we can. I'd like to prepay 100 to 200 meals. Go into a community that the Lord leads us to and just pass out free food, play some, play a little music and just have people on site ready to pray with people, ready to share the gospel with people. Because if you, pay, if you pass out free food, people will show up. <laughs> and so that's a ministry project that I do have that, I, that I'm trying to put together. And that's going to cost. 
And so I would like to uh, extend the opportunity to you if you want to sow into that. I'm going to put in the I'm going to pin in the comments below the screen my email address and you can uh, use that email address with uh, PayPal and you can send in whatever donation the Lord puts on your heart. Uh, as a little incentive uh, for anyone who chooses to send, it, send in a donation, I'm going to send you uh, a prophecy chart uh, that I created. Uh, it's free of charge. I, I can just email it to you. Uh, the Lord has blessed me to come up. I've, I've looked in detail at about 15 prophecies in Scripture. And I have a chart stating when the prophecy was written, what happened, and when it was fulfilled in history. And the span of time between the prophecy was fulfilled and when it was written. This is a powerful, undeniable truth that you can use to show anyone that the Bible is God's word. Because how else would these people know that these prophecies were going to happen, you know, hundreds and thousands of years before they were written? So that's a tool that you can use to witness. And I can, I'll send that to you as just a small, small, small token of my appreciation for you sowing into the ministry. Now, please don't feel obligated to do it. You know, I was a little uncomfortable with this at the, in the beginning, but I understand that people want to sow and help people. And that's of God. And I thank you for those of you who have reached out to me and wanted to do that. So don't feel obligated, though. These videos are free. I'm not charging for anything. I'm doing this out of the love of Christ. And I want to share the gift that God has given me to teach. But if you want to sow, go into the comments. You can find my email address where you can sow into the ministry using PayPal. And every dime you send, I give you my word that it is going to go into good soil. It is going to go to good use to spread the love of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I pray that God will reward you in partnering with me and bless you sevenfold. <laughs> so I just thank God for you. If that's your desire, please do that. If not, it's completely okay, okay? So this is Cornelius Jones signing off. Stay tuned for my next video. It will be coming up very soon. I love you guys in the Lord. Keep watch. For the return of our Lord Jesus Christ is at hand. It is at the doors. I love you guys in the Lord. Take care. Be blessed.